Uh, welcome back for Chapter 5, Geometric Relationships. Uh, today we're going to be discussing Lesson 8, Identifying Combined Transformations. So, um, remember transformations, that is something that changes a shape, uh, either position or size. And um, we've talked about, I think, four types of transformations, dilations, reflections, rotations, and... What was the other one? Dilations, reflections, rotations, translations. And those three, right, um, we had, uh, so dilations, dilation, reflections, uh, rotations, And the fourth one was translations. These are all the transformations that we've talked discussed. And remember dilations, that's when a, a figure, the shape is the same, but the size, whether it gets bigger or small. So that means smaller, that means it's similar, right? Dilations are similar. They're, they have uh, aspects of similarity. Whereas reflections, rotations, and translations, if you have a, a figure and it reflects, that figure is congruent. If you have a figure and it rotates, that figure is congruent. If you have a figure and it translates, it's a translation, that figure that you end up with are all congruent. So um, I liked this picture and I wanted to share it with you. It says many famous geometric designs are created by combining transformations of various uh, figures. And this is just something in, uh, in architecture. And just different things like graphic design or animation, they all use um, these aspects of reflections, rotations, and translations into their designs. And if you look, right, what do we, what do you guys see? Like I kind of see this, this, this shape here, right? And it, it almost looks like it's like kind of dilating and getting bigger, right? Or at least from this perspective. And then, so I thought that, I liked it because I kind of, you know, you can kind of see that. And then if you see here, it's almost like this is the line of reflection here, here. And then this just reflects over here and this reflects over here. And it just, you know, it just kind of looks cool, you know. So when you do those types of things, whether it's you have something and it dilates or reflects or translates or it just is kind of, a cool element. You even have this window here and you could think that that is like translated over here but it's almost like a like a translation or is it reflection I don't know um, you know you but you have that same that the ideas of similarity which just kind of in what these are if these are the same size or the same shape it's kind of hard to tell with this picture but visually, it just it just kind of, it looks cool, like interesting, right? It just isn't all random. It's got some cool different things. And so you look at it and you're like, wow, that's impressive. Well, they use these different um, transformations in their design. And there's multiple, right? And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about combined transformations. So we have like the idea of dilations and reflections, right? And so that's what we're going to be looking in um, this section is how we combine these things and how do we tell what's what and um, yeah so let's look at our first example so example one transformation sequence and congruence so here we have we start here with this triangle and then it goes here you see how there's that one little tick mark up there and then it goes to two so um, we end up here but there's various transformations going on, so we're just going to describe what is going on. Okay, and this transformation, how do we get from here to here? And there's obviously steps, so this is step one and then step two. So let's look at this and just, okay, so what's happening from here to here? Is it a dilation? Is it a reflection? Is it a rotation? Is it a translation? So um, to me, this, the size of these is the same, so I don't think it's a dilation. A reflection, if it was a reflection across the x-axis, B would be down here. If it was a reflection across the y-axis, B would be over here. So it's not a reflection. 
Um, if it was a rotation, a rotation would mean that A, B, and C would be in different places, like A would be down here, B would, and C or something. Like, like these letters would not be, like this would not be on the left top. This is the left top. This is the right top. This is the right top. This is the bottom, right? So like this here, like if, if you were to go, so forget about this. This is more likely to be a rotation because, you know, this is on the left and now C was on the bottom and now C is on the top. Okay, so when you start to see these letters kind of be rotated around, that is kind of like a heads up to knowing that, hey, this might be a rotation, okay? So that's not the case. A is in the same, B is in the same, C is in the same. So most likely when they're in the same, this is on the left, this is on the left, this is on the right, this is on the right, this is the bottom, this is the bottom. When you have something like that, it's usually a translation. So let's see here what happens. Um, so from A to A prime, we're going down one, two, three, four. So that's down four and over one, two, three, four, five. Over five. Okay. What about B? Down one, two, three, four and over one, two, three, four, five. That's perfect. What about C? Down one, two, three, four, and over one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is definitely a translation. So when we're going from triangle A, B, C to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, um, there is, there is a translation. And then we're just going to write the rule. X, Y goes to what was happening with the X. It was going over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so it would be X plus 5. And what was happening with the Y? It was going down 4. So that would be Y minus 4. Okay, so that's the first part. Now let's see what's happening from... Uh, this one to this one. Okay, so what do you think? It's the same shape, so I wouldn't th say it's a dilation. Um, what about a reflection across the x-axis? Remember the rule for a reflection. I'm going to go ahead and write it in a different color. Um, the rule for a reflection... would be x, y, across the x-axis, uh, the x is the same, right? But the y becomes a negative, right? That is a uh, reflection across the x-axis. So let's look at these points. What is this point? This is the point one, two, three, four. So four, negative one. This is the point one, two, three, down one, two, three, four. So three, negative four, and then a prime is zero, negative three. Okay, so with this rule, if we have a prime, oh, I should have wrote the rule on top. It's okay, I can fix it. I have my friend. Okay, uh-oh, what happened? Oh man, that is not good. We can fix it though. Come on now, help me out. Oh, so close, almost there. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, there we go, it's working. Okay, so let's put that reflection rule up here. Across the x-axis, right? Um, so A is a prime is zero, negative three. And that has to go to a double prime, which means the x stays the same, but the y becomes negative. Now, if it's already negative, then the y is gonna become positive, okay? So is a prime zero, three, zero, three. Okay, that one works, perfect. Um, let's try b. So right now, b is four, negative one. 
and then it goes, to, oh, that's B prime, I'm sorry, and then it goes to B double prime, which the X stays the same, and then the Y uh, becomes negative, and a negative times a negative, which would mean it would be positive. So 4, 1, uh, let's look at B double prime, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1. Okay, that one works too, perfect. Okay, the last one would be C prime, which is 3, negative 4, go to C double prime, we keep the X, that's what the rule says, the X stays the same, and then the Y becomes negative, and if it's negative, a negative times a negative would be a positive 4. So let's see if C double prime is 3, 1, 2, 3, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. So this is a reflection across the x-axis. So we would say the first thing is A um, goes to B. Triangle ABC goes to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Um, there's a translation, right? And then the second part, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime goes to... Triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime through a reflection across the x-axis. And that would be the rule, x, y goes to x, negative y. All right, so this would be our answer. So our answers are a little bit more complicated with these problems, but that's okay. It's just kind of two parts. You talk about one part, then you talk about the next part. Okay? All right, let's look at a different example just so we can practice this. Okay, so we have a B here. Now we have quadrilaterals, okay? And it really looks like rectangles, right? They're all 90 degrees. Um, like 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, so we start here, and then we go here, and then we go here. Okay, so identify the combined transformations from the original to the final image and tell whether the two figures are similar or congruent. Oh, I forgot to say that here. Um, so, yes, since we have, what do we have? We have a translation and then a reflection. Both of those, uh, a translation, the figures are congruent. Reflection, the figures are congruent. So we'll just say the figures are congruent. We'll say congruent. We'll put a little heading on it. Okay. All right, now let's go to the other, the other problem. Okay, so we're starting here, then we go here, then we go here. All right, so let's talk about what's going on from here to here. What do you think? What does it look like to you? Well, they look the same size, so I don't think it's a dilation. Uh, what about translation? Uh, it's not a translation because for it to be a translation, translation, the letters would have to be in the same position. So you see how this is the top left? Well, it'd have to be the top left here. A prime would have to be here. And it's not. A prime's down here. So that leads you to a different thing. So like this is the top right. Well, then this would have to be the top right, and it's not. So this is not a translation. Um, so here you see that um, it's probably either a reflection or rotation because the, the letters are in a different order, right? Um, so let's look at a reflection. So uh, right here, there's D, 1, 2, 3, 4, and here it's 1, 2, 3, 4. C is 1, 2, 3, 4 here, and C prime is 1, 2, 3, 4 here. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and B here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and A prime is 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six away. So they're all equally distant from this x-axis, so this totally looks like a reflection. So I'm going to say that um, the first thing is that quadrilateral um, A, B, C, D goes to quadrilateral 
a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime uh, by a reflection, reflection, and we're going to put across the x-axis. And then we want to put in that rule, which would be x, y goes to the x stays the same, and the y becomes negative. So if, let's look here. Okay, look at a. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's look at a prime. So it's still 8. But the y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 6. So you see the x is the same, but the y is now negative. So that is the rule. x negative y. Okay, perfect. So that's the first part. Now we have to go from here to here. Okay, so um, what I see is that the position of this is completely different. I mean, this really, okay, they're the same size, so this isn't a dilation, right? Um, but yeah, this is, it's like this, and now it's like this. So it totally looks as if it is rotated, all right? So with the rotation, I just want to kind of look, and C is closest, okay? So I'm going to draw this line from the origin to C prime. And then I'm going to draw it from C double prime here. And you see what I have here? This is 90 degrees. And it's rotating from this way to this way. So we start here and we're going this way, which would be which way? That would be counterclockwise. Okay, so this really looks like a counterclockwise rotation, 90 degree rotation, but I want to double check. So I'm going to look at these points. Um, I have to remember what that rule is. Okay, so what's that rule? But I can't remember the rule. I have a really good feeling that this is a, a, a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin, um, and I don't have the rule memorized, but I do know this point, and I know this point. I can figure this out, and I think that that, if I figure these two out, then it's gonna help me remember the rule because I know it goes x, y, goes to, and with rotations, besides the 180 one, rotations, these always rotate. It's just one of them is one of them's negative, and sometimes I have a hard time, So, but this always helps me. So if I find, I know a prime is eight, negative six, and a double prime is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this is gonna help me. So you can tell the eight went from here to here, right? So this is my x, and my x goes here, and it's positive here, and now it's negative, right? So that tells me that my rule, it's the x, which is negative. And then you see the y, Did I mess up? Did I mess up? Okay, okay, Joy, think. Think, 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 think. Okay, A. Oh my goodness, this is not eight. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, it's negative eight. Okay, oh, I hope I didn't, I hope I didn't confuse you guys. I really hope I didn't. Okay, so this is negative eight. Okay, sometimes we make mistakes, but then we figure them out and we fix them, and hopefully you're not confused. That's my one thing is that you're not confused. Okay, so I'm sorry. I, that's negative eight. <sighs> okay. Um, but this, okay, so this is A prime is negative eight and negative six. Okay, that's it. And then A double prime is positive six and negative six. Okay, so let me just rethink this again because that was... Okay, so what I do know about the 90 degree, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, is the y and the x, is, they, they always switch spots. And I know that one of them is negative. Sometimes I just can't remember which one. Okay, so the negative 8 here, the x goes to this spot and it's negative 8. So that means the sign doesn't change. The y here, right, goes to the front and it's negative 6 here and now it's positive, which means the y is negative. So that's the rule. Okay, so let's just make sure that this rule, and this is the rule for a rotation counterclockwise 90 degrees. 
All right, so let's make sure that this is the case. Okay, so we already checked A prime and uh, A double prime. Let's go ahead and check B prime. Oh, gosh. Gosh, okay. So B prime is negative 2, negative 2 down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 6. And according to this rule, B double prime should be the, okay, so, I don't even know. So the Y becomes negative. So this is negative, which means the Y is going to be positive because a negative times a negative is a positive. And then just the X goes to X. So negative 2 is just there. All right, so B double prime should be 6, negative 2. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then down negative 1, negative 2. So it is. Okay, so that works. Perfect. Okay, so let's try C prime. C prime is, um, what is C prime? Negative 1, negative 2, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4. Goes to C double prime. Um, so the rule, right, what it should be is that this X goes there and the Y becomes negative. So it's a negative 4. So with that negative, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So it should be positive 4. And then this X just goes there. So it's the same number. Okay. So we should have that. Let's see if that's the case with C double prime. So it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, down negative 1, negative 2. And it is perfect. Okay, that's awesome. So now we just have to check D, right? So D prime is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so that's negative 8 down 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4 goes to D double prime, um, which should be, um, what should it be, Joy? What should it be? What should it be? Okay, so this is the Y, and it becomes negative. So this is the Y, and it becomes negative. So a negative times a negative would be a positive. And then this X just goes here. So D double prime should be 4, negative 8. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it is perfect. Okay, so that's what we know. All of these are confirmed. Um, so I had an idea. Now it's confirmed. So quadrilateral A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime goes to A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, D double prime, by a 90 de degree counter, I keep bumping that, sorry, it's jiggling, um, clockwise rotation about the origin. Okay, and we're going to write that rule, which would be x y goes to negative y x. And are these similar or congruent, right? Are the figures similar or congruent? And we know that what do we have here? A reflection, so that means they're congruent, and then we had a rotation, and they're um, all congruent. So we'll just say figures are congruent. Figures are congruent. So that is our answer. Oh my goodness, that is a lot. Combined transformations. Woo! Okay, we are doing it. You guys are doing great. Okay, so let's look at this last example, and I want to give you a chance to try this one on your own. Okay, if I can get it to pull up here. Here we go. Okay, so C, we have these lovely trapezoids. We start here, then it goes here, then it goes here. So identify the combined transformations from the original to the final image and tell whether the two figures are similar or congruent. So here's my friend, the pause dragon, reminding you to pause your device. Go ahead and work out this problem. C, when you get done, press play, and we'll talk about it together. All right, see you in a bit.
Okay, let's see how you did. Okay, so we start here and we go here. What do you think? Dilation, uh, translation, reflection, rotation. Okay, so what I see is this figure, it's almost like it's pointing up and then it's pointing to, like I'm calling this the point. Now it's pointing to the left. So this to me really looks like a rotation. So that's what my gut is telling me. So whenever I have something like this, then what I like to do is I like to take the two points that are closest to the origin. In this case, it would be A and A prime. And I'm just going to draw a straight line from A to the origin and from A prime to the origin. Now, if you look at that, that looks like a 90 degrees. So I know that from here to here, it's a 90 degree rotation and we're going this way, right? We start here and we're going this way, which means that is counterclockwise, okay? So this looks like a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. And I think we just figured out that rule in the previous problem, which was x, y goes to negative y, x, okay? So then I just wanna make sure that that's the case for all of these vertices, okay? So I'm gonna start with A, and A, the point is one, one, right? Okay, that's the point, the point is one, one. And then it's gonna go to A prime, and if that's the case, the Y becomes negative, so it'd be negative one, and then the X remains the same. Okay, so as long as A prime is negative one, one, we're good there, negative one, one, perfect. Okay, so that works. So then we're gonna go to B, and B is two, one, and we're going to B prime. Um, so the Y becomes negative, and the X remains the same. And so if B prime is negative one up two, which it is, that means that is correct. So now we're gonna go to C, which C is here. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, so C is here, one, three. And then we're going to um, put that rotation, which the Y becomes negative for C prime. And X remains the same. So C prime would have to be negative three up one, which it is, perfect and then D would be two, two. So we would get D prime being the Y would be negative and the X would be, remain, remain the same, which would give negative two, two, perfect. Okay, so we know that that's the case. The first thing that we're working with is, okay, what are we working with? We are working with I'll put it right here. Okay, um, this is, okay, so ABC, let's just say, I'm just gonna call it quadrilateral. It's a trapezoid. Oh, fine, we'll just call it trapezoid. So trapezoid, um, trapezoid, ABDC, right? You always have to go around the figure. You can't go A, B, C, D, and then, and then you know, skip like that. It has to go A, B, D, C, or A, C, D, B. It's got to go around the figure. You could don't have to start at A. You could start at B, right? You could go B, A, C, D, or B, D, C, A. It just whatever you name it, it has to go around one way or the other, okay? So let's just call it A, B, D, C. Okay, um, goes to, and I'm running out of space, so I think I might just call it trap. Okay, um, trap, uh, A prime, ooh, B prime, D prime, ah, C prime. Okay, fit it all in. Okay, <laughs> um, goes to trapezoid, A prime, B prime, D prime, C prime by a 90 degree counterclockwise uh, rotation about the origin by the rule of right here. X, Y goes to negative Y, X. Okay? Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look what's happening from here to here. 
Okay, so dilation, it doesn't look like it's getting, one's getting bigger or smaller, so it's not that. Um, if you look, one thing I see is that this C on the left side is in the same spot. D is on the top left, B is on the top right, and A is on the bottom right. Okay, so they're all in the same position, so this really makes me think that it is a um, translation. Okay, so let's just see here. So the X goes negative one and up one, two. Okay, so I'm gonna just get another, this to me looks like uh, X, Y going to X, negative one, Y plus two. Okay, that's what it looks like. Now let's see if that's the case for each of these. So negative one up two, okay? What about here, B prime negative one up two? Okay, that works. Uh, C negative one up two, perfect. And D prime negative one up two. Okay, awesome, so this is totally a translation. So the second part of this um, is that, and I'm just gonna call it trap. Trap A prime, B prime, D prime, C prime goes to trap, trapezoid, A double prime, B double prime, D double prime, C double prime by a translation. And then we're just gonna put that rule, right? Of X, Y, going to right here, x minus one, y plus two. And then the last thing we have to state is whether the figures are similar or congruent. And when we go from here to here, that was a rotation, so figures are congruent. When we go from here to here, it's a translation, figures are congruent. So we can say that the figures are congruent. Okay, and then here is our answer right here. So if you got all of that right, um, wonderful job, and I'll see you in a little bit for the next example.